One day you opened your eyes and here you were. At the time it didn't occur to you to ask why or how. You were only a newborn infant, lying on your back in a small bed looking up at the ceiling and the smiling face that seemed to appear at regular intervals. And then with the passage of time as you grew older, now two or three years of age, there was a whole world to explore, even if it was only the area contained within the borders of the house where you spent all your time. There was fun things to do, no time to think about anything but the next new object and a fascination with the amazing world you found yourself in. And that's the way it was until you went to school, first grade, second grade, third grade. You were learning very fast, so many new things, and all the new people in your life who were just like you, some the same age, some older, some younger. That time went by quickly. And when you advanced the level of high school, you perhaps took your first hard look at your past, where you came from, and, just maybe, you began to ask some questions. Questions like, what am I doing here? Where did I come from? What is the meaning of all this? And it required a few more years before you asked the corollary question, where am I going from here? And that's when religion came into play. So you read some books, maybe even the Bible. And when you went to college, your interest led you to take a course on religious studies, where you discovered the belief systems of all the world's major religions. And having completed that, or just simply absorbed the cultural ethos of any college campus, you came away with what you thought was the answer to a very nagging question. Who am I, and why am I here? The mystics and sages thought they knew the answer, and so you believed in reincarnation. You'll just keep on recycling until you get it right. Or the Freemasonry's hedonist answer, do whatever you want. No judgment, no wrathful God. In college, you learn that truth is relative and subjective, and that you create your own reality. So, believe whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. After all, isn't that what the existentialist told you in Philosophy 101? Truth is subjectivity, and God is dead. You were somewhere in your early 20s when you stepped out of that highly structured social milieu and walked away feeling confident that there was no objective purpose to life. We evolved from lower life forms. You were taught that in organic evolution class. Single-celled amoeboid blobs of protoplasm that somehow formed more complex multicellular colonies. From there it was billions and billions of generations until a genetic mutation occurred, strictly by chance, and an oddity was produced a creature with lungs to breathe air. And then later there emerged legs, a means for moving on to land. Then after billions of more years and trillions of generations, yet another chance genetic aberration, eyes that just seemed to form all at once. And then the most revolutionary of all, a brain that enabled what was once a single-celled organism to become so advanced that it could walk, talk, create, and build civilizations. This is what you believed. It is what you were taught, that life was all an accident, and that it has no intrinsic purpose except what you give it. By the time you were 30, you were satisfied that you understood how you figured into the scheme of things, and you felt certain that you could explain it all away. What was once a mystery to you was more clear, and you are now primed for entry into the philosophy of the New Age movement. It seemed to make sense that you were actually a god, but didn't know it. You were in command of amazing powers, only you didn't know how to tap into it. But once you read the books, attended the seminars, listened to the videos, spoke with like-minded people, and watched the virtual reality, it all became so real. You were evolving, just like your amoeba ancestor, into something more, something powerful, something all-knowing and angelic and you realized your own godhood. That bit of hope lasted for either a lifetime or with the passage of more life experiences was replaced by another belief system, perhaps some other metaphysical doctrine based upon Eastern mysticism, or perhaps it was a denominational religion like Islam, Catholicism, or one of the many Protestant religions representative of modern-day apostate Christianity. Now in your forties and settled in your ways, married and children, a stable member of the community, you were convinced that you knew what the truth was, 
in your mind you had arrived at a conclusion about life, that you were part of something bigger than yourself, but you didn't fully understand what it was. Most people said it was the biblical God, and although you attended the local denominational church, you didn't believe that, because in order for you to truly believe it, you would have to dramatically alter your way of thinking and restructure your lifestyle to be in conformity with what the Bible teaches. But you were too entrenched in the world and didn't want to give any of it up. So, projecting a good wholesome image, you may have walked and talked in glowing terms of a God who resembled what the Bible teaches, but it was a God who was actually an extension of yourself with Eastern metaphysical overtones, and then allowed for God to be whatever you wished him to be. After all, truth is subjective. It's what you decided it was. By the time you were 50, you had come a very long way. In those early years, when the whole world was everything you could see with your eyes, and where anything was possible, anything at all, for in your child's mind, all things were possible, and there was the presence of an unspoken God, whom you had long since forgotten. Yet, in your quiet moments, as you reflected upon your life, there were times when you had to pause, when thinking about something that had occurred, a close brush with death, a miraculous recovery of a loved one, a chance happenstance that could have gone the other way and wreaked devastation on your life. And then, there was that brief time when you thought you could be wrong about what you believed, that your life had a greater meaning than just satisfying physical needs and accumulating things, that what you said and did actually counted for something beyond the words or actions themselves. Those were times when you could no longer justify your ignorance by saying, I simply don't know. It was at such times as those that explaining the meaning of life really wasn't that simple after all. And you had to frankly admit that you had no idea of the purpose or meaning of life. How you arrived at your present condition as an adult, or even more importantly, what lies beyond the time when you would cease to exist, was just too complicated to ponder. There seemed no way to know for sure. There were a lot of opinions out there, and everyone had their own version. But in your mind, you reason, there could not be multiple versions of the truth. Something was either true or it wasn't. You knew in your heart that something could not be true and untrue at the same time. Not everyone could be right, and only one wasn't wrong. You had at least advanced that level of understanding. So the only question that remained was, who was right and who was wrong? Or phrased another way, you asked yourself, could there be such a thing as absolute truth? And if there was, what was absolutely true and what is false. Ultimately, the issue resolved itself into just one question. What is truth? The answer to that question was what you were looking for all your life. It was the reply to all other questions about life, death, who we are, why we're here, and where we're going. It was the meaning of life question and it had a definitive answer. It was a major breakthrough in your understanding on that day when you finally realized that truth wasn't about a concept or an idea or a belief, but rather a person. The truth was actually a person. It wasn't a thing, and it could be embodied in the life example of just one extraordinary supernatural being. In the final analysis, what you discovered was that the truth is only for those who sincerely wish to know it.